welcome to my channel. Welcome to today's video. Today's video is my fourth and one year update for Project Pan. I've been officially panning products for one year now. I've gotten through some products. I have some empties. Some of these products I've had for the entirety so far of doing Project Pan. Some of these have rolled in. I kind of do more of a rolling Project Pan style. So if that sounds good to you, if you're interested in seeing my progress, make sure you hit that thumbs up button. Subscribe if you haven't yet. But with all that, let's just get started talking about these products. All right, so I do have a few things changing that I want to discuss in this video before we start going over the products. If you want to skip ahead, I have chapters listed down below. I'll also have all the makeup that I'm wearing listed down below. So make sure you check the description box because there's a lot of information, including my project pan video for my eyeshadow. Eyeshadow I have as a completely separate series on my channel. These are mostly complexion products, primer, foundation, cheek products, etc. So like I mentioned, it's been one year. I can't believe it since I've been project panning. It seems crazy to think how many products I've finished, but also just like how little progress I've made on some of these products that I really thought I would have hit pan on by now. It's been... It's been a reality check for me. Now, I kind of, since I'm newer at project panning, I started this just trying to get a feel for it, see how it goes. And now I feel like I have a better understanding of how like the serious project panners do this. So it's time for me to get more serious with my project panning. I do have more than 10 items. I'm gonna talk about all my progress and then talk about the new things that I'm gonna roll over, but I will be having more than 10. And I just want to get better at tracking usage on these products. It's actually a really great way for me to motivate myself to one, just put on makeup. I don't go out very often, I'm pretty introverted. So sometimes, you know, you can get into that slump of, what's the point of putting on makeup if no one's gonna see you. So tracking my amount of times that I'm even wearing makeup has really helped me a lot. I started this when I did my eyeshadow project pan, which I did last month, and that's the next thing. So I used to do three month updates for this project pan, and now I'm gonna go to bi-monthly. So I'll be doing updates every other month, Part of the reason is I just felt like the progress I was making, sometimes it's not as exciting to see the progress photos. You'll see some examples, but there'll be nothing and then everything because that three month span, I can get some use out of some products pretty quickly. So I think it'll be better that I do every other month and then in between those months, I'll be doing my eyeshadow project pan. So on my channel, once a month, you'll have some kind of project pan video. I think that's really everything. I'll explain more as I get along. Let's just get started talking about these products. So the first thing that I have is my primer. And here is what it's looking like. I had this in the project for six months. This is where I started. This was three months ago and here it is today. You know, there is like a little bit left in there, but this does not come off. So I can't, I can't get it out, unfortunately. This is the Guerlain Lore Primer. It was very pretty. You can see it was like a translucent base and then it had 24 karat gold in there. And it, it just looked beautiful. It was one of these products that I've had for a long time in my collection and I wasn't using because it was so luxurious and expensive. And this primer does absolutely nothing for your skin. I don't find it illuminating. I don't really necessarily find it moisturizing. I would not repurchase this. I just want a primer that has a purpose. I don't want to just feel like I'm putting something on to put something on. It is nice to know, I think I finished this back in August. That sounds about right. I, I've had this out for a little while now. So it is nice to know it takes me about six months to get through a full size primer. It was pretty much brand new when I rolled it in. And that's nice to know. I am going to be rolling in a new illuminating primer. Hopefully this one kind of has more of a purpose, but I'm happy to have this out of my collection. As pretty as it was, it really was just a useless product. If you use this and you like it and you notice a difference in your makeup application, I'd love to know. Let me know in the comments because I don't feel like 
this did anything. So now let's move on to powder. I, this is the second powder that I've been working on. The first one was the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Finish Powder. And I thought that one I was gonna get through really fast. I didn't, spoiler alert. And then I had this one. This is a mini of the By Terry Hyaluronic Pressed Powder. And when I had this, there was some usage on it, not too much. I think I've had this six months, but I have to double check. You'll of course be seeing progress photos kind of sprinkled in while I'm talking. And three months ago, I had no pan. And this is what it's looking like now. This is just a mini. It has, let's see, 2.5 grams of product. So it's it's not too bad, kind of like a very large eyeshadow, but it's still taking me quite a long time to get through this powder. I am going to finish up this powder and start tracking my usage on it now that I've talked about it, but it's gonna be a little bit hard. Some of these are gonna be interim until they roll out. So I won't have like a precise amount of usage before I was able to like finish this up because I, I didn't start counting until now, but that's okay. You have to just start somewhere, but this is what I'm looking like. I'm hoping, you know, I don't think I'll be able to finish this in two months. Realistically, I think it's going to take me more like four because I really only use it to set my under eyes, but I will be happy to get rid of one more powder and I will be rolling in a different powder in its place today to kind of just simultaneously work on. Now, let's talk about concealer. The concealer that I pulled was the NARS Soft Matte Concealer. I've had this in here for a year, so I've been trying to work on it. I have the shade Light 2 Vanilla. It's a little bit light for me. It's very light for me in the summer. I might be able to get away with it in the winter time in the upcoming months. I'll have to just see, but it's been tough to use this because of it being too light. It's definitely more of a spot concealer, not something you use on the under eyes. So I, you know, I have good progress on this. I I'm happy with my progress. I wish I would have hit pan by now, but I just haven't been able to use this as much as I wanted. Sometimes I would use this to highlight my face. So once I went in with foundation and concealer, instead of using concealer to highlight like right here, here and on my chin here, I would use a little bit of this and blend it out. That was kind of how I was able to get some usage, but I am actually going to be switching categories in this. It's going to stay in the project but I am going to roll this in in my eye primer category instead of concealer, and I'll be using a different concealer in its place. Just because I want to get through my concealers and it's not happening, if I'm not using this on my face, I can use this as an eyeshadow base. I haven't tried it, so hopefully it works out because that would be disappointing, but I think that will help me get some use out of this concealer, finish it up. I do have a backup that's a shade darker and I wanna crack into that. This is a good product. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping that switch will help things. But this is the NARS Soft Matte. And now I have foundation. This has also been in the project for an entire year. And it is my Chanel Le Beige Healthy Glow Foundation. I don't have the reformulated, I have the original. The problem with this, I'm wearing this foundation today and you can see it's already starting to get too dark for me. It really only fits me in the summer. I'm wearing the shade B30. It's interesting because I have quite a few Chanel foundations and B30 and other formulas I can wear year round, but this one, I don't know if it's just getting a little bit older. It's just, it seems darker. And here are my progress lines. I have not marked a new progress line. I thought we could do that together, but this is where I started one year ago. Then that was my first update, my second update, my third update. I didn't feel like I could make a new line, but this time I can. I took advantage of the shade actually working for me this summer and really try to power through some of that. It's hard to see because this doesn't really settle. I am definitely far past that. I think I'm actually like right here at the end of sunscreen where it says that. So that's where I'm gonna mark it, but it's, it's really, it's hard to tell. I could be further down, I could be less. That's where I'm kind of guessing, that's my best. 
my best guess. When I kind of shine a light down there, that's what it seems like. I've been trying to really stand it upright to get a better visual, but you know, for year progress, I should have been able to finish this, but I do test a lot of foundations. I also do a Shop My Stash series once a month. I'll list that playlist up above and in the description box. So I am not just solely using this foundation. I try to get through all of my foundations, but I am happy with the progress that I made. Unfortunately, it's time to roll this out. I think I'm going to have to take more of a approach of having a winter spring kind of foundation and a summer fall foundation. So this one's had its time. I'm gonna put it back because I know I just won't reach for it in the upcoming months because it won't match me. So I'd rather try and finish up a different foundation. So this will be rolling out and it will be replaced. And now that brings us to complexion products. I think I'll start with bronzer. This is my most exciting update. I rolled this in three months ago. I was working on my Too Faced Chocolate Soleil. I finally hit pan on that. This one was really close to hitting pan. You should see the progress photos. And I hit pan like three days after filming that update. So this is what the bronzer is looking like. I had no idea I was so close to hitting pan or I probably would have pulled something else quite honestly, but because this has no rings at the bottom, I didn't realize how close I was. And I was able to expand the pan a lot in the last three months because I think when I use this, I, I kind of would just swirl my brush. I don't know if you can see the sides here, but the side pan, even like it's pretty shallow. So that's why the pan was able to just expand so quickly because when I use my brush here, I'm really just swirling it all around and it's getting the product to be flat everywhere. So once the pan came, it really just went like that. This is also a light bronzer for me, especially in the summer. So I can really layer this on, build it. That contributed to me just being able to expand it so fast. I'm really happy with this. Part of me wants to keep this and finish this up. I really love this bronzer. This is in the shade Bali Sands. It is the lightest one. I know Capri Coast is the most popular shade. I actually have a mini of that that's untouched, so maybe I should work on that one. But this is really nice. You can't get it anymore, and it would be nice to just decrease my bronzer collection by one but I think I'm gonna put this one away or work on it on the side because I did reach my goal of hitting pan on it and I'm gonna roll in a new bronzer product. So this will be going, really happy with my progress on this. I didn't realize how easy it was gonna be or how close I was to hitting pan. It was a nice surprise because this next one for blush, this is also one that I've been working on for a year, probably the one that I just didn't realize what I got myself into when I rolled this in. So this is the blush. It's the Ciate London blush in Date Night, one of my oldest blushes. I'm really trying to pick products that are older in my collection that I also like just so I'll reach for them. But this blush, it is hard to pan a blush. I understand what everyone was saying. My goal three months ago was to try and wear away all this embossing. It didn't happen. It kind of did like up here, but progress photos aren't really gonna be looking great on this. I do use this fairly often. I'm using it now. I'll even try to remember sometimes to apply it twice a day because it does fade actually really quickly. I love the color. It's a nice glowy blush. I don't typically go for a glowy blush. So if you are someone who prefers a more matte blush, this is a really nice one if you wanna just give it a shot. I think that this is old and Ciate actually reformulated their blushes, but since it did just really fade a lot, I even tried to get more usage and apply it twice. <laughs> It still, it still is just a pain on my side. My goal is to hit pan on this. Eventually it will happen. I will start tracking my progress to just give better numbers and have a more realistic idea of how much I'm actually grabbing for this within a month or two. So stay tuned for that. But as of now, this is staying and it will not be rolling out. The highlight that I have is one that I 
actually hit my goal on of hitting pan three months ago in my last update, but I wasn't really finished with it. So I kept it in for another round and now I'm gonna roll it out. It's the ColourPop Super Shock Highlight in Lunch Money. Here's what it's looking like. I was able to expand that pan quite a bit and you can even see like the divot on and around the pan of where I kind of was able to wear away the sides. This product, I don't really use my fingers, so I think this is like a good representation of the amount of product that's in here. I'm not really squishing it up on the sides or anything like that. I use a brush to apply this product, so that is probably making it a little bit longer to pan this. I know this is something that you think you're going to pan quickly. A lot of people try, and then it just, it's never ending. So, you know, I am gonna roll this out now because I hit pan, I'm not gonna keep it in. I wanna hit pan on some other highlighters, spend some time with those, really get my money's worth out of them. But I do, this is one of my favorite highlighters. It's just a go-to when I don't know what to wear or I don't know really necessarily, if nothing's really grabbing my attention, I always reach for this. It's just a simple highlight and it's the only ColourPop Super Shock that I have left in my collection. I decluttered the rest. Lunch Money is definitely my favorite shade. It's just like a very light champagne -y gold. I like it a lot. That's complexion though. Let's now move on to setting spray and lips. I think we'll do setting spray before lips. This I've had in my project for six months now. I got through my other one and this is where I'm at for this. It's just so sad. I really tried to finish this off today. I even did like extra spritz, but I couldn't, I just couldn't get there. This is the Glow Recipe Watermelon Glow Ultra Fine Face Mist. So I've been marking it this way, not this way, because you kind of get two different readings, but this is where I started six months ago, three months ago, and now that's where I'm at. I... I thought about rolling in a new one today, but I don't think I'm going to. I am just going to mark this though where I'm at because realistically, like, I just think if I only had a week's worth of product in here, I would consider rolling in another one. I know which one I want to use, but I think that it's more than that. I think that it's a little bit deceiving on how much you use. And I can just use other setting sprays that aren't in my project in the interim of my update. So I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to finish this one up. We'll talk about it in the next update and then I'll roll in a new setting spray. But this one, I was so close to finishing. I was so close. I just couldn't get there, which is a shame. But next update, it'll definitely be done and I'll be rolling in a new one. And then the last thing I have is lips. I believe that I've been working on this for six months. I believe so. So this was practically brand new when I rolled it in. And here is what it's looking like today. My goal was to get it flush with the packaging, which I did. Now this is like a chunky lip balm. This is the Buxom Power Plump Lip Balm in Glowing. I'm wearing it today and unfortunately this is like a product I don't like. Some days it looks okay and some days it just looks patchy. I'm wearing it on top of a matte lip gloss right now, a matte lipstick, excuse me, and I just, that's the best way I can get it to look is layering it, but it just, I don't know, for some reason it just like picks up on my lips sometimes. I don't love it, so I'm gonna continue layering it sometimes. If there's just time throughout the day where my lips kind of feel dry, I'll come and grab this if I'm not gonna be around anyone, like if I'm editing or something like that. It's a good one to throw on. I thought about rolling it out, but I wanna dedicate myself to just finishing this. I have it and I should get my money's worth out of it. My next goal, I mean, it's hard to say, here's how much product is left. And in my little tracker here, I have it written down. So I have my line mark there on where it's at. I'm actually measuring it this way, just so you know, with that line. We'll see how much progress I make. Maybe hopefully like that much, but I think this has quite a bit of time left in my project, unfortunately, even like six months at least, 
six months at least is what I'm thinking. So this, this is hanging out for a while and then I'll be able to roll in a new product. But those are all my old products. Now let's talk about all of my new ones because I have some here and this is where things just start to get interesting. All right, so first up is primer since I finished that Guerlain and this is one of the oldest primers in my collection. So it's coming into the project. This is the Becca Backlight Priming Filter, something like that. I am going to mark it with you now. I've been having it standing upright for about two weeks. And here is my starting line. I'm hoping I can get this rolled out in six months. It's easy for me to just kind of layer a illuminating product on top of a pore blurring product. Usually that's kind of the primer I prefer, a pore blurring primer, but I've been getting use out of these and just kind of using it as like an extra moisturizer. I also like it, I've been learning to appreciate it, having it more with a foundation that's maybe a little bit more on the matte side to just bring a little bit more glow and have it be more of a natural finish. So this is the primer. I already mentioned this, but the NARS Soft Matte Concealer is switching from my concealer category to my eyeshadow primer category. So I'm kind of just considering that with my primer category. And then that's gonna bring me to the concealer that I'm rolling in. And I really, like I said, just want to get through some of my oldest, oldest products. So I am rolling in this Catrice Liquid Camouflage. I've had this in a Shop My Stash before, but look how, I mean, look how much is left. It's old in my collection. It just, it really needs to go before it's expired. I'm looking at it now and I believe that my line is actually here. It's not looking like it's that low, but it's not fully settled. So I really, I should be able to finish this in two months and roll in a new concealer, the next update. I really think so. I really enjoy this. That's why it's mostly gone. I have the shade 005 Light Neutral. I love this. That's why, I mean, I already said it, but that's why most of it's gone already. And I just need to focus on it and get it out of my collection. And then I also want to, every update, kind of have some kind of sample in my project pan. My samples are just sitting to the side and they're not getting used. I just wanna get them out of here. And for some reason, I can't let go of them. I want to try them. I want to see if I like the product, but I don't use them. So I'm gonna put them in Project Pan because I know that's how I'll use them up. So first one up is going to be the By Terry Hyaluronic Hydra Concealer. It has four different shades inside here, and I'm pretty sure that I'll only be the shade 200. So like, here's what it looks like. I have two of them. I just kept the little flap thing to show you, but I'm gonna get use out of this, see if I like it. And then this will kind of just be, my goal will be to finish it up, roll in another sample. All of my samples right now are all complexion. They're either concealers or they're foundations. I don't have any lip samples. I finished the one that I had. I kind of just worked on that on the side, finished it up. I have no cheeks, I have nothing, just concealer and foundation. So I wanna just work on those. I'll probably switch kind of between foundation and concealer as far as like the little samples go. So this I will also work on in conjunction with my Catrice Liquid Camouflage. So that's coming in. And then the next one is foundation. And this is a discontinued foundation. It still works fine. I tested it on myself to just make sure that it wasn't expired before rolling it in. But I believe this shade is going to work for me and I think I can finish this if I really put my mind to it. Maybe not in two months, but maybe in four months. This is the Tarte Rainforest of the Sea Water Foundation. I loved this when I had it. It just kind of got pushed to the wayside. And I'm thinking that my line is right here more than halfway done so that's where i'm putting my line i just shook it up i don't know why i did that that was just habit but i can kind of see a little bit of windowing where it started to settle pretty sure that's where my line is but this will be the foundation until it just doesn't match me anymore it's going to stay in the project 
The next thing I want to talk about is a category that I haven't yet pulled into a project pan, and it is a color corrector. I have been kind of working on this color corrector on the side on my own, but I really mostly just want to track it for myself, take progress photos, see how many times I'm using it to finish it up. So I figured I might as well just bring it into the project instead of just use it on the side and not talk about it. This is the Benefit Boing Brightening Concealer. I have the shade number two. So this will be rolling in starting now in October, and this is the starting point. You can see that, you know, I have been working on it, but I need a push to use it more. Sometimes I just forget because I do like to use this before I put on foundation. Sometimes I'm in just such a mindless routine that I just put on foundation and then I remember I was supposed to use this, but it's too late. So I officially want to just start keeping track of how many times I'm using this when I do my makeup and hopefully see some, some more progress on that. That brings us to powder. I already talked about my By Terry powder. You saw the progress on that, but I'm also gonna be rolling in a finishing powder. And that is the Laura Mercier Candle Glow Powder in the shade one. I love this powder a lot and I don't have too many finishing powders in my collection. So I thought that it would be good to work on it and here is what it's looking like. My goal for this is to hit pan. I'm actually trying to think now. Do I want to hit pan on it or do I want to completely finish it? I think I'm just going to go. I, I want to make sure that I'm like kind of being able to rotate products out. Cause if I just have products that are in here for two years or so, it's not very exciting every update. So my goal is gonna be to hit pan on this and then we'll see how I feel from there. Maybe I change it. It's my project pan, I can do what I want. So this is what it's looking like. I, I have gotten some use out of this. You can kind of see because it's a baked product that I flattened it out just a little bit. I love this. I like it better than the Hourglass Finishing Powders. It just gives a really nice soft glow. Sometimes the Hourglass Powders have like little speckles of glitter and I don't love that. This is purely just a candlelight glow and I love it. So I'm gonna roll that in. And now for bronzer, this is also where things just get interesting. I have two. I'm going to pull in a powder bronzer. This is the Kevin Aquan Contour in Light. I wanted to pull this in because I've, I've had this for a long time. You can barely see any use on this. My goal is to just hit pan, that's it. But I thought it would be nice to have a contour powder because I do also use bronzer and shop my stash. It's one of my favorite categories to kind of bounce around. So I thought bringing in a contour powder would be really nice to work on. This gets also just forgotten in my collection because it's a contour powder and having it just front and center I think will be a really good thing. But I'm going to extra challenge myself and this is like my... To me, out of everything, this is like my challenge product. Even though blush is hard to pan, highlights hard to pan, this is my challenge product. And it is the Hourglass Sheer Illume Trio. I have had this for so long, it looks pretty grody. Do people still say the word grody? I feel like that's the only word that fits it. It has a bronzer, a blush, and a highlight. They're all cream. It's not expired, it smells fine, and like it looks, like I said, it looks not great, but I actually get use out of this product. So my goal is gonna be to completely finish this face palette up. It is cream, so I can layer it on top with other powder products. It's an easy product to just get multiple use out of, and that's, that's what I wanna do. I really wanna focus on this. It's so old and it's going to expire soon and I love it too much to just not get more use out of it. So this will be rolling in and I'm excited to track my progress on that. Blush, we already went over and that brings us to highlight. I been thinking about this for a long time. I really just knew that highlight was gonna take a while even if my goal is to hit pan on it, it's gonna take me a good amount of time to hit pan on any kind of highlight. So I really wanted to make sure that it was a highlight that I liked, that I wasn't going to regret bringing in. And I think I settled on the one that I wanted. And I've talked about this on my channel, of course, in collection videos, etc. This is probably the oldest thing in my entire collection. And it is this Dior highlight. 
This is the, let's see, Illuminating Lace Effect Powder for Face. This is pure metal, like it's super heavy. And then the pan has like this beautiful lace effect. I did use this a little bit quite infrequently considering how old it is because it was one of my very first high-end products I ever purchased. It felt so luxurious. I kind of coveted it and never wanted to use it, but I'm ready to hit pan on that, on this. And the main reason why is you see me go back and forth because after I did a collection video, I looked and I saw that this is like a very rare collection item for Dior. They go for like $150 on eBay. And so I actually was, I put it in my makeup memory box of products that maybe I don't necessarily want to use, but I don't want to get rid of. And then by some luck of fate, I came across one brand new in the box, never been used. And it was a really affordable price. It was not $150. It was $40. I don't think that the person knew what they had. It's definitely like they, they showed me their receipt and everything. Like they were just trying to get rid of it. Um, and so I have a brand new one. Oops, the little cover came off. So here's what it looked like. Brand spanking new originally. Like you can just see how beautiful it is. So because I have this, this is going to go in my makeup memory box. Was it a little silly probably to spend still a good amount of money on a highlight that I'm never ever going to touch or use? Maybe, but I made an exception. I normally don't buy backups. This was an exception and this is just like a special keepsake for me. So this box is going in my makeup memory and I want to hit pan on this. I want to actually feel like I got some money's worth out of this very expensive bronzer, especially now that I bought it twice. So this is gonna be my Project Pan Highlighter. I'm very excited to work on that. That brings us to basically everything that I had categories for with the exception of eye primer. Now I have some more categories I want to roll in because I am an overachiever. Let's get started. I have four things. First one, is this pair of lashes. I brought this into a shop my stash and said that once I kind of just finished using it the 30 times, I would talk about it then. I haven't been reaching for this. This is the Lily Lashes in the style Sassy. It's kind of like a half lash. I got the recommendation from Annette's Makeup Corner on these. I just need to put this in the project because I know that I'll use it in a project where I'm tracking it and have a goal. So my goal for this, I want to use this the 30 times because that's how many times you can usually wear lashes before you can toss them. So my overall goal is 30 times. My goal for the next update is five times. That's about two or three times a month. I think that that is an obtainable goal. We'll see how I do in the next update, if I reach that goal or not, and then I will adjust my goal accordingly. But I think five in the next two months is solid, but I will keep this for the full 30 until I roll it out. The next thing that I have is a fragrance because I have a lot of fragrance and I need to get some use out of my fragrance collection. So I picked one out and I picked one that I don't reach for all the time because I'm not going to just limit myself to this fragrance, but it is again, just one of the oldest fragrances in my collection. It is the Paco Rabanne Black XS fragrance. I bought this when I was 18 or 19. I think I told this story. I can't remember if I did, but I was an au pair for a little while in Aix-en-Provence, which is a region, a city in France. And on my off days, I would go into the city. And sometimes I would go into Sephora. It was kind of like right when I was getting into makeup, I was 18 or 19. I'm 33 now, just for reference. And I saw this perfume and I wanted it so, so bad. And it was like my treat that I bought this in that city. This is what it reminds me of, of that time when I worked there. I worked for a very prestigious family that owns a vineyard. It was an experience for sure. That's like a whole nother story. But this is what I bought with some of my money that I saved up. And I just remember going into Sephora and always spraying this on myself, looking at it, wanting it. And I finally bought it. It was like my very first just nice fragrance. So I want to, I want to use it up because fragrance doesn't last forever. It still smells okay, 
but you know, it is gonna go bad eventually and I'd like to get some more use out of it. So this is the fragrance I'm gonna pull. My goal is to finish this up. I do not wanna mark the bottle because I actually plan on having a display case with all my perfume bottles. So I don't wanna mark this up, I won't be. You'll have to just settle for progress photos, but my goal is to finish it up and eventually have it in my display case, even if it's empty. And then if you're interested on just, you know, what this kind of smells like, it is categorized as like a warm, spicy scent. To me, I think the rose looks kind of fitting. It doesn't smell too much like rose. It says here that it is discontinued, by the way. It came out in 2007, which makes sense. I bought it in 2008. And the top notes are cranberry, pink pepper, which comes out a lot. And I don't typically love a pink pepper scent. Tamarind, middle notes are cacao, rose, and black violet. I get that a lot. I get the pink pepper, rose, black violet. Base notes, vanilla, patchouli, and masoya wood. I don't know what that is, but yeah, I get like a rose, pink pepper, tiny bit of patchouli, not too much vanilla scent out of this. And I'm excited. Two more things to get through. I know this video is getting quite long, but let's power through liners. I have a lip liner and an eyeliner. So the both of these are Dior. Of course they are because that was the first kind of beauty brand I became a little bit obsessed with. The first thing I'm going to pull is just a black eyeliner because I need to get through my black eyeliners. I have three or four open. Like I've mentioned before, I know that I just won't reach for this if I'm not tracking it. Tracking it has really been a strong motivator for me. It works, so I'm gonna continue to do it. My goal is to finish this up. I just, I wanna finish it up, get through it, get through all my black eyeliners, and eventually just have one. Not even a backup, just one. Because I don't get through it fast enough to use a backup quickly. I think I'll know when I'm getting low and I can purchase a backup appropriately, but I don't wear black very often. If I wear an eyeliner, it's usually brown, so I want to push myself out of my comfort zone, use black more, and finish this up. I have this tracked on my little sheet here. Let me find it. I bought a very fancy just Project Pan notebook so you can see how serious I am. And let's see, my marking for the eyeliner is here. So I have it kind of just like that. The next one is a lip liner. This was also one that I've kind of just been panning on the side because I was sick of seeing it. This is the Dior Glossy Lip Liner in Glossy Pink. This is the weirdest thing ever and why I decided to finish it up because this is a glossy lip liner. It makes no sense. This, a glossy lip liner doesn't make any sense. I don't know why I purchased this. I'm sure the lady at the Macy's counter, which is where I was purchasing a lot of my Dior items back then, like told me this was good. And I was like, great, it'll make me beautiful. And it was pretty much full. I've been working on this quite a bit, but it's it's quite fast to get through because it is a glossy lip. It's essentially like an emollient little stick lipstick. I mean, I don't know what else to say about this, but here is my progress line for that. So going like, let me take the lid off. So going like this, and I have it starting from this line here. So I think I could actually finish this up. Uh, two months might be pushing it, maybe four, four months max, but I'll be, I'll be close by the next update because really like use this once and then you need to sharpen it. I've gotten through quite a bit already just on my own. So that's going to be rolling in. And that's everything that I have for this project pan. I appreciate you listening. I know this is a little bit of a reset. Like I said, I've kind of been switching up the rules as I've just been learning more about Project Pan. If you have any tips for me, let me know down below in the comments. And also let me know if Project Panning works for you, because I'm sure there's some people who like watching Project Panning content, but it doesn't necessarily work for them. There are some people, you know, like it's not motivating. For me, this is highly motivating to get through my products and kind of hone in on something, but I'm still always at my heart going to want to try and test new products. So I don't expect myself to ever just like stop buying products, but I do want to get some things moving out of my collection and finish them up, finish them up because I love them. So it's nice to just see my progress. I'm excited now that I'll be, you know, kind of tracking it in my notebook here and just see like actually how many times it takes to finish something up. I'm intrigued, but let me know all your thoughts down below. Of course, give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And I'll see you all in the next one. Bye, everyone.